excuse me. <clears throat> Just lost my temper and exploded in her face the other day. I doubt she'd be as quick to trust me as Koji was, which meant that it'd be difficult to get her alone. Rather than dwell on it by myself, I could just ask Saya for her opinion. Even I had some pride, however. I want to show her that I'm a man who can take care of business. Unfortunately, I'm able to come up with anything before I get home. Well, I suppose that I should just be proud of having to deal with Koji, who is the imminent threat. The search of Professor Uyi's cabin was a bust, for no trace of his having been there, but I see no reason to get frustrated. Saya isn't all that concerned about isn't all that concerned about the professor's whereabouts, so looking for him is just something I'm doing to satisfy my own curiosity. I'm home. It's morning, half a day later than I normally get home and the sound of Saya's running downstairs tells me just how impatient she was for my return. It makes me feel all warm and tingly inside. Aww. Welcome home, Fuminori. She enthusiastically throws her arms around my neck, her smile at least 20% brighter than usual. Sorry I'm late. There was a change of plans. It's okay. I'm just about done with my preparations, too. Preparations? Saya responds to my confusion with a mischievous smile. I'm getting a surprise ready for you. What kind of surprise? That's a secret. Aren't you tired? Do you want to eat or take a bath first? I don't realize how hungry I am until after Saya mentions it. When I think about how I've been walking around all night without eating anything, my stomach's emptiness becomes painfully clear. However, I can't sit down to a leisurely meal while covered in dirt and sweat of the road. I'd like to grab a snack, to grab a quick snack and get into a long hot bath first. I thought you might say that, so I got the bath ready. You must be cold after being outside all night. Yeah, I sure am. I'm amazed by Saya's foresight. <clears throat> She's always ready to give me what I want before I want it. Whoa. Hmm. Sounds like you had a hard time. While soaking in the bath together, I tell Sai about yesterday's adventure. Killing him was easier than I thought. The hard part was getting home. The heat of the bath is soothing, as is the sensation of Sai laying against my chest as she massages my... What? Oh, and she massages. <laughs> wow. She massages the fatigue of the night's walking off of my stiff dick. Her cute little collarbone rises each time she squeezes my legs, and I can see the soft curves of her breast floating in the water. Ah, uh, I'm home, I think. As contentment fills my body, I don't even need to sleep to relieve my exhaustion. Just left the living room and bedroom. The bathroom is painted in the colors that Saya and I find pleasing. We've left the entrance and hallway untouched, just in case someone should see the inside of the house. So these three rooms are the only places that can relax in my own home. I 
It was very cold in the mountains, even for winter. I should have worn heavier clothing. I was afraid I'd freeze to death when it got dark. Why didn't you just take that Koji person's clothes and wear them over what you had on? Aren't you forgetting that I pushed him into a well? His clothes were with him at the bottom. Oh yeah. Saya laughs and sticks her tongue out bashfully. So now there's just that to suck about yo woman to worry you raped her she's the only person I can think of who can connect me to Koji's disappearance after I take care of her we can finally relax hmm Sally glances at me over her shoulder like she knows something I don't yeah she put her tentacles in Yo's woohoo. Have you already thought of a way to kill her? Well, I have been thinking about it, but I haven't come up with anything yet. I was hoping that you might have some ideas. <clears throat> Leave it to me, she says, grinning with unusual confidence. I have a way of dealing with this that you'd never dream of. It's as good as done. Re really? Okay, it should be ready by now, Saya says, her voice full of anticipation. Water swish. She rises from the bath, her naked body glistening through the steam. Come on, Fuminori. I have something to show you. You're wearing the exact same clothes. Close your eyes and don't open them until I say so, okay? Okay. I have no idea what's going on, but I do as Saya says and close my eyes. She takes my hands and leads me upstairs. So the surprise for me must be on the second floor. As I wonder what it could be, the sound of something crying upstairs reaches my ears, putting me on guard instantly. Saya, is there something... No peeking. She never heard of that word. Admonish? Admonishes me? Then strokes my arm soothingly. Don't worry, it's nothing dangerous. All right. The voices get louder and louder as Saya leads me up the stairs. The unmistakable sound of a person sobbing miserably is coming from the bedroom, telling me that Saya has let someone else into our home. At first I'm amazed she can be so careless after what happened to her two days ago, but then I realize that something is strange. I hear someone sobbing in misery. Isn't Sai the only one whose voice can carry such clear emotion to me? I know what's happened. Although I still have my eyes closed when Sai leads me into the bedroom, I know there is someone moaning and trembling right in front of me. However, I smell none of the human body odor that normally turns my stomach. Yep. Okay, time to meet face to face. Open your eyes, Fuminori. I obey and open my eyes, and I am struck dumb by what I see. Tuskabuyo is lying on the fetal position, without, without a scrap of clothing to cover her shivering body. When I first lay eyes on her naked flesh, 
I'm entranced by the sensuality of her generous proportions, far more mature than I would ever expect it from her usual and pure and innocent appearance. Wait, forget about that. Why is she in my bedroom, naked? Moreover, why is she... Well, Fuminoi, how does she look to you? She's beautiful, but why can't I... It doesn't make any sense. There's no question that the naked woman in front of me is Tesco Bayo, from who I remember. She isn't the putrid creature whose attentions I found so unbearable after the accident. My senses recognize her as a human that she is. This girl likes you, you know. I do know. I've never told Saya, however. How did she find out? I knew it! So I decided to change her body into one that can be loved by you. Sai so pauses to gauge my reaction, and then continues with a satisfied nod. I made her like me. What? How? I still don't understand what led what led Sai to chose Yo, but even more incomprehensible is what she just said. She changed Yo's body. Don't you remember what I said the other day? I have the ability to mold the bodies of other living things. Yeah, I remember. She said she's done something to the neighbor Suzumi's brain. I hadn't doubted her sincerity, but I hadn't seen what she had done to Suzumi with my own eyes either. I guess that until now, I thought she'd been half exaggerating. But now, with Yo, like this... It was a big change this time. Not the little tweak I made to the man next door, but this is how my abilities are really meant to be used. This was my this was my first time doing it though. Is this really yo? It might be a strange question considering that she looks exactly like yo, but I know better than anyone that she's not supposed to look like herself to me. Yo finally notices my present and turns her head to face me. I can see a faint glimmer of recognition in her glassy, unfocused eyes. It's the way Yo used to look at me. How could I forget? This is far beyond more cosmetic, mere cosmetic surgery. Once a twisted creature, unrecognizable as human, Yo is now the very image of human femininity. There is no similarity between what she was and what she is, which means that Yo has become something utterly inhuman. According to Saya. She has become what Saya is. No one on this planet knows more about the un the anatomy of Homo sapiens than I do. Saya declares, her voice filled with pride at her first creation. I've studied a lot, after all. Studied? How did you learn this? Who taught you? When? Where? She couldn't have learned from Professor Ugi. No teacher on earth would be able to impart such knowledge or skill to Saya. It's far beyond human capabilities. Come on, don't you remember what you've been filling me with every night? Seaman? Saya blushes in embarrassment. It is Seaman. I was joking. That's like a blueprint for the human body. I can decipher it and then I can bend it to my will. She plays with semen. Wow. 
What is she, really? I've accepted that she isn't human, but there's more to her than that. Tsai is something that far transcends my species. It was my first time, though, so it didn't go as well as it should. When Sai approaches, Yo trembles in terror and tries to crawl away, but she's only able to flail her arms and legs wildly. It's like she doesn't know how to move her new body. And the only sounds coming from her mouth are frightened moans. She can't talk? Yeah, Saya says, shaking her head regretfully. Unfortunately, her mind seems to have broken. It did take a whole 20 hours for the change to finish, after all. I feel a little bad for her. She must have suffered a lot. Ellipses. Yo looks up at me, pleadingly, as though begging me to save her. She's no longer capable. She's no longer able to ask me to, for help, though, nor even call my name. Well, Saya asks, her eyes shining with anticipation. Do you like her? I'm at a loss for how to respond. What do you mean? You said you wanted family and friends, didn't you? That's why I got this present for you. Her innocent explanation only confuses me further. A present? Come on, it's not like she's a puppy. There's not much difference. Her head is totally empty, after all. I'm happy that Saya wants to please me, but she could use a little more common sense. It's not that. Holding a person capital is probably a lot harder than you think. Not if she can't talk, bro. Don't worry about it. Look, I have her chained up. The only thing preventing Yo from being totally naked is the leather collar around her neck. I have no idea where Saya got it from, but it's the kind of dog collar that would be sold in a new pet store attached to it's a long chrome chain that's fastened to one of the bedposts. Yo tries to get away again, but Saya sends her sprawling with a tug of the chain. Yo falls clumsily to the floor, squealing in pain. Her actions are those of an unintelligent animal, just as Saya said. This is awful. And besides, it's not like she can do anything complicated, like escape and get help anymore. See? There's nothing for you to worry about. Is there? Saya has a point. I was racking my brain trying to come up with a plan to kill Yo, but now my problem has been solved in a way that I never imagined. If a normal person looked up upon her now, they'd probably see no trace whatsoever of the old Yo. And if she has no memories and can't even speak, it's perfect. Sai has killed Yo without taking her life. There's still the problem of what Sai means by giving Yo to me, however. You're not happy? Sai asked dejectively, her confidence suddenly gone as though it was never there. Did I misunderstand again? Is this a problem for you? No. I can take good care of her all by myself. I won't let her make diff things difficult for you. So, can she stay? That's not it. That's the last thing I want is to reject the symbol of Sai's affection. But how can I explain to Sai the reason I can't look at this naked woman writhing on the floor? It's not that. Yo is the first human figure beside Saya that I've seen in three months since the accident. And she's a woman. A woman positively glowing with voluptuous feminine beauty. Beauty? Of course, I'm happy. But I also can't ignore the voice of reason that's telling me not to be. 
how do you still have that? You've eaten human flesh and you've pushed your best friend down a hole. I'm happy, really. But if I show how pleased I am, I'm worried that you'll... Eh? Saya looks puzzled, as though she has absolutely no idea what I'm getting at. I mean, look. She's still a girl, right? You... Balk at the thought of me living with another girl? After considering this briefly, Saya finally seems to understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> of course not. You're thinking too much. Maybe I'm worrying too much, although I'm pretty sure that I'm just showing the consideration that any man who's sworn his love to a woman would show. Or maybe Sai doesn't understand that a man faced with a woman's naked body can't help but react regardless of his feelings. <laughs> How funny. You really, you really are kind, Fuminori. Yeah? Only did that so she'd be able to please you. If you like her and enjoy spending time with her, then I'll be happy too. You have nothing to be shy about. I hate to say this, but... I struggle to find the right words to express my true feelings. Men are, well, really depraved creatures. And... I mean, Yo's body has features that are totally...